If you think about dropping a pebble in the right place that brings forth, you know, sort of the outcomes organically through others, right? So where you drop that, that pebble and creates the right ripple effects can really sort of spark change, right? The way that we talk about. Hi, I'm Shannon Lucas. I'm one of the co-CEOs of Catalyst Constellations, which is dedicated to catalyzing innate change makers to accelerate positive change. And I'm Justin Scott Campbell. I am a DEI consultant and leadership executive coach. This is our podcast, Catalyzing, Catalyzing a, a Culture of inclusion. of inclusion, where we highlight catalysts who have taken the brave step of moving into DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion work, leadership in large organizations. We hope this mini series is a space of learning, encouragement, and ultimately community and connection. If you're new to DEI and or the world of Catalyst, we hope you'll enjoy. So Jesse Cortez is the Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, uh, and joined McKesson in 2019. With almost 20 years of experience in talent strategy and DEI, Jesse has worked with some of Fortune's largest companies. He's recognized as a thought leader on topics such as executive talent, large-scale diversity initiatives, and working with nonprofit organizations. He currently serves on the board of directors for the Hispanic Technology Executive Council, known as High Tech and the High Tech Foundation, and co-leads the Chief Diversity Officers Forum for Disability in Ranked as the highest Hispanic diversity officer by Latino Leaders Magazine earlier this year, he views accelerating belonging and allowing people to bring their best work, be, their best to work as major drivers of his personal mission. Uh, so thank you for being with us, Jesse. We really appreciate uh, your time and having you here. Uh, we'd love to start off by hearing how you, um, as a diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging practitioner, relate to the concept of being a catalyst. Yeah, well, well, Justin, Shannon, thank you very much for having me on your show. I, um, you know, I, I love getting an opportunity to, to sort of share right out um, lessons learned along the way so that uh, we can continue to, to help our, our DEI community where possible. You know, I, I guess I, I see the concept of, of Catalyst as a, a, a bit of an agent that um, I guess you might say sort of speeds up or sparks action, right? Um, and in that case, uh, I would say that, you know, I've, I've always been a bit of a transformation junkie, um, a, a bit of an architect, right? So think about how you either sort of build from scratch or uh, you may enhance or grow from a foundation that might already exist. So certainly, right, from a DEI perspective, uh, the work falls very easily into those categories for sure. So certainly a concept that, that resonates with me. Awesome. And as you said, the point of the podcast is for us to sort of glean some learnings to help the DEI practitioners out there. So we'd love for you to tell us one or two skills that have made you successful as a catalyst in this space, maybe with some stories that have helped you. And as we were talking about before we kicked off, like maybe there's some failure stories as well, because they aren't always going to be successes and those failures can be interesting learnings too. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, I'd, I'd say probably the, the, the first one, um, might be a bit of uh, around vision, um, mm. right? It's sort of the ability to not just sort of cast a strategy, right? But uh, the ability to identify uh, what I would call sort of the most impactful opportunities that evolve your journey, right? And nice. so I, I frequently call this a bit of a, a ripple effect. Um, so if you think about dropping a pebble in the right place that brings forth, you know, sort of the outcomes organically through others, right? So where you drop that, that pebble and creates the right ripple effects can really sort of spark change, right? The way that we talk about. Um, and, you know, you have to sort of constantly be looking at the at the big picture, but also, right, understand that you can't do it all um, and you're not gonna be able to boil the ocean. Um, and so, you know, I, I always tell my teams, right? That um, make no mistake, right? You will not be able to go about it alone. And so to, to your point, right, around building community and helping each other out, and this is why the DEI ecosystem is so important. So when you think about employee resource groups or nonprofit partners, you mentioned high tech and there's others like Disability In, um, even your uh, the business unit leaders, right, at the most senior levels and even mid-level managers, right, in those, in, in, in those corporations that you work with, um, or it's your HR partners or even the C-suite, right, and the way that they champion, that entire ecosystem um, is important, right, to the process and, and to the outcomes and to the influencing that needs to take place. Because the reality is, is that without without their help and support, it's virtually impossible, right, to uncover where those, I call them golden nuggets, really sit. And I guess if, if you don't do that, 
um, or you're not, or you don't have a, a strength in in that ecosystem, um, you end up sort of spinning your wheels, right? And then you end up really not gaining much real traction in the outcomes that you're seeking. So I, I guess by definition, I guess if I call the other side the golden nuggets, right? This is more like fool's gold, right? And um, and so you know when that happens, um, it makes it really difficult, right, to be able to say gosh, we've poured all these resources into this thing and we still didn't get to where we wanted to go. And so one of the things that I think is really important and it sort of relates to, um, to this vision piece is really, really making sure that the, you're diagnosing before you prescribe. Otherwise, you're not really getting to the heart of where the, the change uh, really needs to take place to really advance, right, those outcomes. I guess the second piece I'd say is just being able to really sort of deliver stories that help people sort of relate and connect to the why. Like, why are we doing this, right? In a way that also includes them as part of the solution. Um, and so I think too many times it's really easy for us to say, well, we're going to target these communities only, but we're not really thinking about everybody. And the reality is, is when we think about inclusion, it's, it really is everybody. Um, and so everybody is looking to, to belong, regardless of how they identify, whether they're part of a so-called majority or a minority group. Um, and, you know, I would say too, that when we, when we think about um, looking to do this, it really allows us as members of, of the same company to really win together, right? As one team. And when that happens, that's sort of where the magic really sort of comes to life, right? It's, it's you have the opportunity to feel, not just feel good about things, right? And I'd say that, that certainly is an aspect of this, right? We, we're not in the quote unquote people business, if you don't feel good about helping others, right? Um, and there is a, a bit of an emotional connection that, that sort of, you know, uh, comes with that, especially when you're able to sort of bring the best out of those teams. Uh, but it's more about connecting with one another as employees, our customers, our communities. It really drives much more of a, a greater level of competitiveness when it's done right. Um, and so when we win in the market, when we win and we are able to, to provide solutions um, to very critical issues, right, that our customers or our communities are facing, that's a good thing for everybody. Um, and so that's what we're looking to do. Um, and, you know, the, the reality is, is when we think about inclusion, it's not that we're taking anybody's seat away. What we're doing is we're really expanding the table so that more people have a seat at the table. And when we're able to bring a bigger table together, we're stronger because of it, right? And so that's the way that we, we think about it. Such a great, great metaphor, the bigger table. I'm totally going to steal that. Um, I just, I want to go back to vision because it's so seminal to Catalyst. And I'm wondering if you can describe, if you can double click a little bit more, like how do you create the vision and how do you get people, I hear the storytelling part, so maybe that's part of the answer, but get people to find that shared value or go along on the journey to execute that vision with you. Yeah, I think inherently, right, everybody wants to be a part of something bigger and something good especially if it allows us to, as a company, to, um, you know, live our purpose. Here at McKesson, our, our purpose is to advance health outcomes for all. So when we say all, we really do mean all, right? We don't, we're not looking to leave any community behind. And so therefore, it's really important to make sure that we are baking in the right perspectives that understand how it connects with those communities. And so that's a much bigger, um, you know, uh, mission or vision, right, for the purpose of the organization. And when people can connect to a bigger purpose like that, it makes it really easy to say, oh, I understand why this is so important and why I need to be part of this bigger thing, because it allows us to make these great changes, allows us to win. And oh, by the way, we're doing really great things in the community as a result of it. Yeah, I think you had mentioned. Oh, sorry, Justin. I, no, I was just going to say. I know you had mentioned um, failures, <laughs> um, right? Which I, you know, I I will tell you, right? Um, you know, there there are opportunities to learn. So I, I prefer to call them learnings rather than failures or 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 missteps, right? And I remember early in my career that you know I was so focused in in one area of a, a particular talent pipeline. This was with a previous employer um, that you know. I felt like, you know, I had done this so, you know, so I thought, right, this magnificent job, right, at, at being able to drive positive change and ultimately, right, was building out um, these amazing outcomes from a representation standpoint at a very key level in the organization. So, right, by all intents and purposes, wow, that's a great headline, right? That's a good thing. 
Um, and everybody took notice, by the way, right? And it was very much celebrated as a big win. You know, but when I, when I was able to sort of step back, the reality was that it really sort of depleted layers of the talent that were below that mark, right? And, you know, really the, the thinking about it more holistically and investing across all parts of the labor pyramid became very apparent because now we had to start over, right? Um, and so that was a really big lesson that, that I learned along the way, which sort of ties back to, right, the, the, the sort of vision piece, looking at the picture, the big picture, and then being very sort of uh, specific about where you drop the right pebbles so that, it, when it, again, it creates the ripple effects across all parts that are important. In this particular instance, we should have been looking at other parts of the labor pyramid, not just one specific right um, um, a career level. And so that was an important, important lesson for me that on the surface was a win, right? But there was some failures behind it um, that really, again, sort of stalled progress because now we had to sort of start all over again in these other areas where if we would have been thinking about it, um, you know, more, more consistently across all of those levels, we would have had much more, right, gains um, at a quicker pace. Mm. Yeah, I, I really like the framing uh, that you that you just shared around lessons and learning from uh, experiences. And so as we as you kind of think of your work now, what are some of the biggest challenges that you're currently facing, uh, given all the things happening in the world and, and, and what's happened in the last three years, especially since 2020 uh, and moving into the future? Yeah. So I have um, largely for most of my career, I've either been on a plane as an old healthcare consultant um, or have been working in very um, sort of virtual remote environments. Um, in fact, at one point in time, I led a team that included, um, you know, 36 reports that were scattered all over the globe. And I only really met a handful of them in person because wow. we were so used to working in a remote and virtual setting. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would always say that it was uh, probably easier for me. And these were back in the days where we actually didn't do these virtual meetings with camera. That was sort of, uh, you know, oh, we, nobody does that, right? It was just the voice piece. So we even really didn't get to interact sort of visually. Um, so it's obviously dating me quite a bit here, right? Um, in this environment, but um, I, I'd always say I could probably pick out their voice at a concert, but I couldn't tell you what they look like, right? Because that's how we, that was the, the reality of our work environment. Um, but now I think more and more people are introduced to that very thing with the addition of now video, like the way that we're doing today. And so it is a much very, it is a very different dynamic in the way that we work today. So I will tell you that ensuring that those, those, um, those teammates are very connected with the work and the journey, um, like I try to do with my own team here, uh, and, and really in, that they're really investing in themselves, even from a wellness perspective, because this work can be very draining. Um, and so, and, and, and the reality is, is we've got a, um, you know, we have a big responsibility in the work that we do for the corporation, you know, and at the enterprise level, right? And we do have a multinational footprint. So, you know, we take, we try to take in as many of those, those perspectives as we can and really sort of um, uh, build on, right, purpose and build on belonging and build on how we care for one another. And, so, you know, again, right, if it, it's, it's emotional work. So when it's, it's left unchecked, it can be really draining. So I hope, you know, I, I, I hope that what, I, what I've done for them is to really celebrate them whenever possible, right? Because number one, they're all amazing. Um, I don't, I may be a little biased in that because they, they are my team, but they truly, I do truly believe that. Um, I, you know, I also um, want to make sure that they're taking care of themselves with time off or um, you know, flexibility when they need it, um, or or simply just investing in them from a, a stretch or development perspective, right? So that, you know, we're preparing them for bigger, better, uh, you know, roles, whether it's in DEI or elsewhere on the enterprise. And so so that they can grow and and, and, and that they truly remember um, how valuable they are, not just to me, but for the organization itself, right? Uh, so as a company, I'll kind of go back to um, you know, this whole notion of, of living our purpose, right? Again, to advance health outcomes for all. Um, we won't be able to fully activate that if my team isn't in a position to drive the impact for the organizations with, with you know, because without their efforts, we're just, we're just not going to, to get there. We will fall short. And so um, to me, that's, that's an important element. This, this new environment, this post-COVID environment 
is is um, is different um, and requires us to lead differently and making sure that we're really looking after one another for sure. Yeah. Amen. Yes, yes. <laughs> and you know, as as you were saying it, I think for some of us, especially in this work, um, it feels like we're forced to choose between the work and wellness, uh, and also even the word wellness can be a bit amorphous. So for your team, how do you how do you kind of define it or show them what it looks like or what it could look like a vision, I guess, uh, of what wellness in this work looked like yeah. a couple of things, but um, how, how yeah. do you figure that out for them? Well, you have to model it number one, mm. right? Because if you don't, you're, you're, um, you're not, in my opinion, right? You are not truly giving everybody permission to do the same. Mm. Um, I, I know they probably get tired of me saying the same thing over and over. Uh, but it's because I, I do think it's it's important. And I tell them the work will always be here. Mm -hmm. and, number, and so number one, the work will always be here. When you get back, the work's going to be there, right? Mm -hmm. So when you take the time off, truly take the time off to recharge your batteries. Um, and then the second piece is we've built a really strong, high-performing team. Mm -hmm. And so there's no doubt that if you needed somebody to lean, lean in and cover, yeah. We can do that too. We're well positioned to go do that. So hopefully, right, that that sort of brings down, right, this need for always having to be connected with work. Um, and, you know, I, I have just recently started, uh, Justin, um, delivering something that I now call Jesse's Journal. Um, it's sort of a monthly, I guess you might call it sort of an email blog, right, that I send to my team. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a recap of what's kind of in my head <laughs> over the past month. Mm -hmm. um, I usually deliver at the end of the month <clears throat> and it gives us, it gives the team sort of a sense of what are the things I'm thinking about in a very, very sort of almost personal, transparent way. Um, I do try to deliver them, to, to deliver to them some nuggets to, or, you know, some level of inspiration around somebody that, you know, may have a quote that's really inspired me that I, I want to share with them or a book that has um, helped me in my career at some point and why. Um, but then it's it's the other things too, right? A handful of topics that, you know, made me reflect in that month that also made me appreciate who they are. Um, and I do it in this way. It's sort of a little way of for me to just say thanks to them and to show that I do care about them. And and coincidentally, the one that was delivered four days ago or whatever it was at the end of this month, um, the, you know, one was around really you know, fully understanding our why and sharing and communicating those stories, right, with their stakeholders. Mm, yeah. But being able to deliver on that why without forgetting to take care of themselves. And so, because we want both to live in, in one happy place. And it is about, it, actually, I will own it. I try not to use the word it's about. Um, it's an integration. That's right. And you can determine how you want to integrate it in the best way for you. That's the flexibility that we want to be able to provide. I totally agree with the integration. That's where I landed too, because you don't want to set false expectations, right? I mean, we still have big jobs and there's a lot of commitments, but it's the integration and the, sustain the sustainability of it too, right? And I love mm -hmm. that you're modeling that because, um, you know, when leaders don't walk the talk, that's louder than anything that they say or put in the email. So um, thank you for modeling that kind of leadership. Yeah. All right. We're going to turn from the heavy, awesome stuff to the more awesome rapid fire. So one thing that you do to get ready for a big meeting. Prepare and know your content well in advance. Awesome. It's so funny because so many people who come on this podcast say that, and it seems like table stakes. And I think it's great for everyone else to hear that the reason that people get there is because they prepare like that. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. All right. So we talked a lot about, you know, rejuvenation and wellness. What's a favorite way for you to spend a free day? Gosh, you know, for me, if you are, um, if, if, if I'm not in the, uh, in our movie room watching with my kids, something that usually it, it's usually because we've got some sort of day off. I call it a day off. Normally on weekends, we are on the ball fields. <laughs> so I coach my kids. Um, I don't coach my son anymore, but he still plays baseball, competitive baseball. And then I do now coach my my daughter's team, and we do travel around and play in these big tournaments. And uh, she plays at a competitive level. She's ten. My son's uh, fourteen. Um, and so I, I get a lot out of not just um, 
being with them and seeing them compete, but um, being able to deliver some of these these life lessons through the game. And so that really does sort of fuel me and it allows me to maybe live a little bit uh, you know, of, of uh, my old playing days through them too. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, favorite, favorite famous catalyst, dead or alive and why? Okay, so I'm probably gonna throw a curveball at you for this one. Awesome. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. This question comes up a lot uh, when I do panels, when I do interviews or podcasts. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I've promised myself do, to do is actually rotate names. So cool. I'm going to land, I'm going to land on <laughs> Florence Nightingale uh, nice. this time around, the probably known as the lady, lady with the lamp. So if you think about when um, she was around and, and when she made a mark or began to be, uh, make a mark, uh, a true catalyst was in the 1860s. And I think it was the Crimean War. You're testing my history a little bit here. I think it was the Crimean War. Right. Um, and um, she was very, the, the reason I, I bring her up is I, I relate to a lot of what she did. She was very purpose-driven, right? She wanted to, to do things in service of others. So, right, if you think about the Crimean War and the conditions that they were in, um, she leveraged really sort of bold, unconventional thinking and challenged norms to influence and then elevated the role of nurses. And she was the one that first established, I think it was like 18, 1865, something around then, where she established uh, the first nursing school with high standards that elevated healthcare mm. as a result. That didn't exist until she did it, right? And if you think about even today, women are fighting for rights, civil rights, and she was able to influence the way that she did, you know, over a hundred years ago. Uh, almost 150 years ago. And so she had a vision for a better future, right? Something that I, I also love about her. Um, again, she established the nursing programs, training schools, basic techniques, and sort of pioneered also statistical methods for training without, the, or for treatment, I should say. Without that, we probably don't have, you know, an opportunity to do data-driven health outcomes, um, right? Without without the um, what, what she did early on. And then she just, you know, had, grit, perseverance, right? In spite of all the no's and uh, being in really horrific conditions of the war, she still endured. And, and then the last piece I'll say is, you know, she had a very sort of talent mindset, right? And from a DEI perspective, you also have to have that as well. So she had strict, she was strict in, in talent selection, um, you know, trained with, with discipline um, for, for consistency of performance. And, you know, that's one thing that, that we think about here, right, is, um, we leverage what we do in a way that we use a, a, a bit of an equation, right? You've got sort of this a best talent strategy. You will always select the best um, individual for the role, regardless of what they look like, where they come from, or, or any of those other, other elements. And if you can surround them with really good inclusion from an environmental perspective, work environment, et cetera, teams, you're going to get, you know, as the outcome, belonging and better performance. Mm. And so that's one thing that I think that that she did very well. Such a great story. And I didn't think about or know about the talent perspective. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. So as we kind of wrap up here, and thank you for sharing all that. It's just great to hear um, all those uh, different parts of you and learn about you as a leader and how those things influence. And we talked a little off the pot about baseball and the importance of the game and how it can teach us uh, a lot of life lessons. Um, and so as, as we kind of go into uh, the end of this, um, is there a call for action that you'd like listeners uh, to kind of maybe hear from you? Yeah, that's a good, a good question. I, um, you know, I, I would say we should always extend each other a little grace and empathy. Um, be open to other ideas and perspectives. Um, you know, I think what we'll find is that we have much more common ground than we think and you know we really are much more alike than we are different so when we're able to do that all right it's just going to facilitate much um much more of that sort of, i call it the you know that that trust wheel right where we can be vulnerable with one another we can trust one another and then allow us to be who we are and and let the best of each other sort of come forward and we will all win by that love that yeah that's such a beautiful vision um that you've kind of cast for us. And so uh, with that, you know, thank you, Jesse, for joining us. We're excited to see where your work takes you as it continues to emerge, as you bring your vision for this work to your team, 
and, and continue to uh, work with that in the world. Um, so thank you for, for taking the time to tell us about your work and, and all that you're doing. Shannon, Justin, thank you very much for having me. And um, I will always extend an invitation to all of you and anybody who's watching or listening that, uh, you know, we, we should always consider extending our networks where possible to help each other out. So find me on LinkedIn and I'm happy to do that with all of you as well. Love it. And to our listeners, thank you so much for listening. Be sure to check out the book, Move Fast, Break Shit, Burn Out. And if you'd like to learn more about how to accelerate positive change, go to our website at catalystconstellations.com. If you have other catalysts in your life, hit the share button and send the link their way.